By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Joopwak from the Netherlands. And he's playing with a deck that I've called Bodyguards Angels because of the full playset of Veteran Bodyguards and the full playset of Sarah Angels that we find in this brew. And it's quite an interesting deck. In a moment I'll do the deck text and I'll discuss this deck. I've got a nice deck picture for you. So it's, uh, it's really something to look forward to. And I'm playing with um, a deck of mine I've called Ice Rain, named after the two cards Ice Storm and Stone Rain. So it's a deck with a big land destruction component, but there's more to that than just that. So before I start with the deck text, I just want to point out you can find the timestamp in the description below. Like always, click on the timestamp and that will take you straight to game number one if you want to skip the deck text. For now, we are going to continue with the decks, starting with Yoop's deck, Bodyguards Angels. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Yoop Vak. And uh, I mean, I'm instantly drawn to that beautiful place of Beta, beta uh, Veteran Bodyguards there. Really, really cool. Uh, he's also playing with four Sarah Angels, hence the name uh, Bodyguards Angels. And he's playing with two castles. Important to note is that the rule of castle has changed the errata. It now gives plus O plus two to any untapped creature that the controller of the castle controls. So that means that um, if he when he attacks with Sarah Angel, it stays a four six. So it still has six uh, defense. So that is quite nice. And looking here, he's playing with um, some interesting combinations in this deck. He's playing with a double. Preacher and he's also playing with two Diamond Valleys. So that means he's got that little trick going on where he can steal uh, one of my creatures and then sack it to Diamond Valley next turn, untap his Preacher again and steal another creature. And that way kind of killing all my creatures and actually gaining life from it. So that is, that is quite nice. So that's a combination uh, that I'm definitely going to look out for during the game uh, to see if he manages to assemble that. He's also playing with one Wrath of God, which works really, really well with the three Maze of Ifs, because when you play a Maze of If and a Bodyguard, basically what your opponent is going to do or tempted to do is simply play out more creatures to kind of try to deal some damage and get rid of the Bodyguard. So that works perfectly with the Wrath of God. So kind of lure your opponent into playing more uh, creatures. And then we also see a Pestilence, and Pestilence is going really well with that Castle, because Castle kind of buffs the defense of your creatures so that you can up the pestilence without killing your own creature so that's kind of a nice classical combination as well and the anime deaths also work really well in this uh, kind of tactic of course where you're killing a lot of creatures obviously we see the swords of plow seers the disenchants uh we probably see some blue power to give it to give it uh, the deck some more strength um interesting here is that he's only playing with two counter spells a mana drain and a counter spell so that, that that's going to be interesting to see it, it, it is a surprise, of course. He's also playing with the Demonic Tutor. So with the Demonic Tutor, you could kind of see that maybe as a as a third counter spell. I wonder how he's going to, to use that tutor. Um, so overall, it's an interesting and fun looking deck. And I'm really curious to see. I mean, nobody ever plays Veteran Bodyguard for a reason, right? So I'm really curious to see, is Veteran Bodyguard really as bad as many people think? Or is it actually better? And is it a little bit underplayed? So um, I'm hoping to find it out with this matchup. Let's take a look at my deck. And here we see a picture of my deck, the deck Ice Rain. Obviously, this is named after the three Stone Rains and the three Ice Storms in the deck. And they're a really important component of my strategy. So what I want to do is get a Lanawer Elf one of the mo or one of the Moxen out in, uh, in turn one. That means that I've got about six. Well, if you include Soul Ring, I've got seven uh, options for that turn one drop so that I can play a Stone Rain or an Ice Storm in turn two. And that's very important to me because I want to kind of slow my opponent down by taking out one of his lands and because I have more mana, because I am ramping and he's uh, losing a land, I can really take advantage of that. That's something that you also see with the deck Urnum on Ice. Now I'm also playing with four uh, Urnum Jins. I'm playing with three Sarah Angels, so there's quite a lot of uh, beef in this deck as well. I'm also playing with three Sylvan Libraries and the Sylvan Libraries are very important also. So if I for, for whatever reason, cannot manage to play an Ice Storm or Stone Rain on turn two, I at least want to play out a Sylvan Library. I really want to get early advantage in the game, drawing my white removal to control the board even further and then kind of get ahead with my big creatures, you know, get an early Sarah Angel 
or earn him, uh, earn him Jin in to really uh, kill my opponent and to play very aggressively. You could say this deck is very aggressive. And um, yeah, I'm curious to see how it's going to go. I, I think what's really going to be important is will I be able to control, um, will be able to control kind of the game from a turn two point forward. That's going to be a very important uh, moment in the game for me, that turn two play. So um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if I can hold up against this uh, very interesting veteran bodyguard deck. So uh, let's go to game number one. Game number one, and we've got the bodyguard deck on the left, and we've got my ice um, storm stone rain deck on the right. And let's see, we've got a tundra there for an opener for my opponent, Yoop, and there is a quick strip mine here, and we see a city, another duel, and there's a diamond valley that uh, is gonna work so well with the preacher if he gets those two on the board. And now I've got three mana, that means land destruction. And uh, that means I'm taking care of another land, really going for his mana sources here and playing an Urnum Jin. And curious to see, I it looks like he's already having some land issues here. So this could be a quick game one. Playing a Lanawer, or yeah, a Lanawer Elf. So that means that possibly I can start casting a Sarah Angel next turn. Not doing that, attacking with both. That means five more damage, casting another land, playing a Sarah Angel. I think, I mean, I think this game uh, is going to be over really, really quickly. And this is basically what my deck wants to do when it works optimal. It's just taking care of the mana base of my opponent. At least he finds a Tundra. He's able to play one Swords, but that's it. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much it. Not the most exciting game one. I admit that, but my deck is working the way it's supposed to work. And let's go to game two and let's see if my opponent um, can find more land at least. Uh, Yoop now knows what my game plan is. So that's some extra information for him. Game number two. And uh, let's see if the bodyguard, if we can see a bodyguard. I'm just hoping to see a bodyguard because that was a brutal game one. And there, it looks like I get to start here. Interesting. Opening with a Savannah passing turn. Look at that opening of my opponent there. Two Moxen and a Scrubland. There's a Disenchant. Like, I, what I want to do with this deck is use my Disenchant to also take care of um, of his mana base. So I played it pretty aggressively on the Moxen. There's an Ice Storm. And here you can see why, because I'm just really counting on my land removal and Disenchants. And let's see if I can find a third spell. Tapping four, you're finding a creature that's an Urnum. And as we can see now, even though I've played a Disenchant and an Ice Storm, my opponent still has a lot of land. And he's playing a JDM Tome. At least I can hit in if he doesn't have a sword. So I'm dealing four damage here. He's going to 16, playing another Urnum Jin. And he's playing Diamond Valley. What else is he playing? Playing a Sarah Angel. So it's still looking good for me. Just swinging in here, I'm going to deal four damage if he wants to block with a Sarah. I don't think he does. Attacking here, even animating my Mishra's Factory, probably means that I have a Lightning Bolt. And yeah, there's the Lightning Bolt. So that means, okay, of course he's gonna eat it with his Diamond Valley, and that means more damage. What he basically needs now is a Balance, and he's back in the game, if he can find a Balance. And he has a little bit of card advantage with that book, but he's on 12 now. And sending one back with his Maze of If. So he still gets some damage there. Going to eight. And let's see what he can do. Tapping five, playing a Veteran Bodyguard. That's quite an interesting card here because that's actually enough to, uh, well, if I attack with everything, I guess. But I'm not doing that. I don't want to lose my Lanawar Elves. I think it would have been better to just attack with the Lanawar Elves as well in this case. Because then I have to sacrifice the Lanawar Elves um, to the Veteran Bodyguard. But that wouldn't really matter that much. Because then the Bodyguard would die with the added uh, damage from the... Uh... Ooh, this is heavy from the Urnum Jin. I wanted to say. But there is a Preacher on the board. I need to get rid of this Preacher. Or he can start stealing my creatures and uh, feed them to the Diamond Valley. And now I just have to attack with everything I have.
but this is going to be very problematic for me. He's sending back one Urnum. That means his veteran bodyguard will probably die here. And he's probably going to eat it to gain some life. And that's exactly what he's doing. So he's going to gain life now. And that life gain is very important because that keeps him in the match. And, and that means he can start digging for answers. And now he's asking for a creature. So I'm giving him my Lanawar Elf, obviously, uh, which is fine. But next turn, I'll get into trouble because he can use his Diamond Valley to eat my Lanawar Elf. In this case, he can even use it as a blocker. I guess he can because it, it comes in, into play tap for him. So that would have been even more perfect. And can he find something else? Because I can still deal 8 damage and he's on 8 life, but he can eat the Lanawar, so he will be on 1. Look at this. Playing Ancestral Recall. Finding another Maze of If. That will do it. That will do the trick. Wow. I mean, he's just going to stay alive, and maybe he's even going to... gonna. Maybe he's even going to win, because it, it looks like it has stabilized in his advantage, because he can now start stealing... My Urnums, I'm not sure why I'm giving him my my tapped, uh, my untapped Urnum, by the way. I should have given him at least my tapped Urnum. Well, he's giving me another chance next turn. But look at those two Maze of Ifs. That's going to be very difficult. Wow, this game has really turned. I mean, uh, look back at, at the start of this game and you would think that I would, I would have this in the back. But... Those Maze of Ifs in combination with Preachers and Diamond Valley are really a killer combination here. He's going to steal another one. Eat it. Going to go to 14 already. So all the damage I've dealt has almost been for nothing. With that second Preacher stealing the other one, probably not going to eat this one. Well, actually, his Diamond Valley is tapped now, so he cannot even do that. But wow, this game has turned. The tables have turned. And, and can I find a way to get back from this? I have to start by killing his Preachers. And this is an interesting move. Not sure why I'm playing a Lightning Bolt on... Oh, I have a balance. That's why. Oh, Counterspell. Ay, 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 ay. The balance could have brought me back into this game. I was already thinking, why would I play a Bolt not on this Preacher? But that's because I had that balance. Ay, 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 ay. And he played a Counterspell. Yeah, maybe I should have been more aware of, of counter spells. You know, he is playing with blue. I mean, then again, I mean, based on, on game one, but game one gave me very little information about his deck, of course. I mean, I just felt I had to I had to give it a try. If the balance would have resolved, it, it would have meant he would, would have lost both of his preachers. And I guess I'm going to flip. What am I going to flip on here? Let's put it in slow-mo. And here we go, getting ready for the flip. I think I'm flipping on the angel, just wanting to preserve life here and finding an answer for those preachers. And that's a hit. So let's see. And yeah, I was flipping on the Sarah Angel, trying just to to stay alive. And I have, I mean, I have a regrowth in the deck, maybe getting the balance back. I, do, I am playing with and lightning bolts um, and sword supplies here. So maybe I can find a solution for those two preachers. I have a lot of land removal. Oh, but look at this. There's a Demonic Tutor. Um, so that could be another problem for me. I wonder what he's going to pick up. He's already played the Ancestral Recall. That's how he found his second uh, Maze of If. And that's, of course, why blue power is so powerful, you know. I mean, for one blue mana, instant speed, you can just draw three cards and can, uh, can draw into an answer. And it looks like he is playing... Did he look up the anime dead? Or did he have that in his hand? That's, of course, a question for me. Uh, and Yoop knows, of course. But this is nice to see anime dead on his Sarah Angel. So, again, not great news for me. And remember, as soon as I animate the Mishra's Factory, he can actually steal it with my Preachers. So it's not really that useful for me at this moment. I'm looking again and just playing a basic land. The thing is, I know I'm going to take three damage next turn, so I'm a little bit hesitant with choosing to take life for an extra card. The thing is, if, if, if I, for example, find 
my own Sarah Angel, it's useless because when I play it out, my opponent will just steal it and we'll have a second Sarah Angel. So what I'm really looking for is removal. And then again, I have to decide, am I going to remove the Angel or am I going to remove the Preacher? And um, yeah, is he going to have another anime debt or another Sarah Angel? Remember, he's playing with four Sarah Angels in his deck. And I've already lost so many Urnum Jins. Earlier in this game, I had three Urnum Jins on the table. Don't forget that. And I think I should have won the game right then and there. And this is going to be really, really tricky for me. My, my biggest chance here that I see is a regrowth on balance. So I'm just going to need luck. Okay, okay, this is something. A Wheel of Fortune. Maybe I can draw into... Oh, Mana Drain. Ay, 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 ay. And it looks like Yup has all the answers for this game number two. And um, he was actually telling me that he looked Mana Drain up with the Demonic Tutor. So, uh, uh, yeah, this is pretty painful. I can't really see a way for me back into this game. I mean, yes, I'm still on 13, and he can hit me for three at a time if he doesn't attack with his with his preachers. Oh, look at that. Even a, uh, a brain geyser after a mana drain. That's what you want to do. So I actually wanted to get back into the game. Instead, he's gotten back into the game. Look at this, playing a disenchant over my Sylvan Library, making matters even worse, putting me on 10 now. Taking care of my man land. Uh, what can I do? And this is frustrating. And I think it's just really, really a good idea when you're ahead of the game to use your demonic tutor to tutor for a counterspell. Attacking now with his preachers and his Sarah, putting me in five. That means that I die next turn if I don't have anything here. Playing at least a Lanoir Elf and just a Tsunami, but he doesn't have any lands with... Well, okay, his Underground Sea is losing one measly Underground Sea here. And this kind of shows also... And yeah, 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 you, you've won this one. Game number two goes to Bodyguards Angels. That means it's a 1-1 one, one, and we're going to game number three. Game number three. So who is going to take this match? Will it be my land removal tempo deck or will it be that preacher veteran bodyguard shenanigans of my opponent, Yoop? We'll just have to wait and see. After this game, we will know. And there is a City of Brass mock jet into a soaring. That's quite a start here of Yoop. And I'm starting with a Lanor Elf turn one. Not, not bad, but I mean, when you're looking at your opponent and you see so many permanents on the board, you're not that happy with that opening. Uh, playing a Plateau, tapping both of the dual lands, playing a Disenchant here, taking care of the Soul Ring, so trying to attack his mana base, and playing another Lanoir Elf. So I'm able to do quite a lot in that second turn. Ooh, and there we see a Chaos Orb. Is he going to flip? Or is he going to wait for me to play out a bigger threat? He is going to flip. Going to go to 18. Will he flip on a dual or on a Lanoir Elf? That's another question. Well, the flip's a hit, and he's flipping on my dual land, making sure that I don't have access to any white mana anymore. And tapping four, playing in Urnum Jin. That Urnum Jin cannot really do a lot in this case. Look at that, a nice, beautiful castle. That means the Veteran Bodyguard is now a 2-7. And I'm going to attack, but that's no problem for the Veteran. And, oh, I'm also going to pay a, play a Lightning Bolt. That means that I'm able to deal with that Veteran Bodyguard. And I'm playing another Urnum Jin. I'm drawing a lot of Urnum Jins in these games. And look at that. He's on six. Now it's going really fast. Playing a Stone Rain. It looks like this is a done deal. He needs a balance here. Ooh, well, finding an Animate that at least that's something. That's going to give him an extra turn. Um, that bodyguard is now 9 toughness, by the way. And I'm probably going to flip here on the bodyguard. Let's put it in slow-mo. And here we go, flipping on the bodyguard. Ooh, it almost missed, but it kind of like half bounced back or something. Anyway, it's a hit, and that means the bodyguard's gone. That's end of game. That's end of game. And wow, I mean, yeah. I think, in all fairness, uh, Yoop, you were just really unlucky that I had so many Surrender uh, surrender Gins. I mean, come on. That was a bit silly. Because, I mean, you had a pretty good deal. Starting with the Loa, 
Mox, Brain Geyser, Veteran Bodyguard Castle situation going on. And if I would have given you more time, you probably would have found your Preachers. And then we would have had a similar situation that we saw in, in game number two. Anyway, thank you, uh, you for bringing this beautiful deck to the table. It's really cool to see these Veteran Bodyguards. Please let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the card Veteran Bodyguard? Would you consider playing it? Are you actually playing with it? And um, I mean, I remember back in the day that, you know, this is Grandpa Timmy talking again, but um, in 94, 95, 96, when I, when I started with the game, I really had a lot of respect for Bodyguard because uh, it could win you games, at least in my eyes it could. Later I realized that the card is not that good, but yeah, let, let me know if, if you have any ideas how you can brew around Bodyguard. Would you always play it in combination with Castle, for, for example? Um, for now, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support me, if you want to support the show, you can do that by liking, watching the video like you've already done, leaving a comment, letting me know what you think about this matches, sharing it on your socials, clicking that notification bell, that helps a lot. And uh, you can also support me financially on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the show. There's a link popping up right now. Click on the link and it will take you to my Patreon page. And you know what? Just check it out. Have a look. Maybe it's something for you. Maybe it's not. But I would appreciate a visit on the Patreon page either way. Talking about Patreon, let's take a look at the end scroll with all the patrons that are supporting Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the Ich bin ein Fingertus, Sumba, Kazi!